Oh my gosh. All right, so I've been recording and I didn't know it. All right, so anyways, you guys, this is the painting I'm doing. Um, these colors I've created to kind of match the colors that are in here. And anytime you're trying to color match colors in nature, you have to use the color wheel, okay? And so that's why I posted a color wheel in today's folder. All right, so if I'm trying to get a yellow, I'm gonna look at yellow, or even a color that looks like yellow, um, I have to look at it and ask myself, what would I have to add to that to kind of create that? So generally, to tone down or neutralize a yellow, in it, which means gray it down, I'm gonna add violet, okay? So I'm actually gonna take yellow and add a little bit of this is violet. This is a mixture of red, violet, and blue. It's making what you might call purple or violet. If I add a little bit of yellow, I mean a little bit violet to yellow, you're gonna get something like this, okay? It's a neutralized yellow. The more I add, the darker it gets. Now this, I've actually added red violet to it to make it more like some of these brownish tones that are back in here, okay? So, all right, so you guys, if you're not doing anything, that you should actually, you're watching it. All right, cool, you can see it? Awesome, all right, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, anyhow, um, so, uh, so anyhow, um, so, so again, when I'm creating these colors, I'm actually just working between yellow and violet. All right, now the blue in the background was just the blue. It's like a French ultramarine blue that we had. It worked out pretty well. It just did a really thin layer, and I kept it wet as I was moving across here. And then I started laying down some of these yellow tones and the brownish tones that kind of were creating these color areas, okay? So I've got a lot of it done. I need just a little bit more of it happening in here. And I'm really trying to create you know, kind of separate color areas of, you know, um, there's going to be kind of the, the more gray, neutral gray colors that are in here, you know, kind of like the rock sort of areas. And then this is, I'm not sure exactly what it is either. That it's just maybe where the sun's hitting it. But even some of these yellows, I'm going to bring back in some of these figure forms that are in the top. Okay, so I've still got to bring some of those colors up in here. But, you know, as, as, as uh, complex as this seems, it really isn't that complex when you break it down into colors. You know, there's only a, a few colors actually being used. And so, you know, I brought green in here, uh, but, okay. So, um, I may use it in here, but I may actually be able to get that green by actually mixing some yellow and blue together. So, the less colors you have to use, the more harmonious your color composition is. So, the more that you limit your colors, uh, the better this works out. Okay, so I've actually got to run and get my brushes. I forgot I'm right back. So I grabbed a bunch of brushes um, because generally when I'm working in an area, um, I like to be able to use all the colors at one time and, and not have to, you know, uh, bounce back and come back into an area. So, you know, it's good to be able to, if I'm going to work this area, work all, all the, uh, the different variations of the color at one time. So what I've been doing is kind of laying down, you know, some of this color first. And I'm running out of color, so hopefully I can get those color areas finished before I completely run out of paint. The problem is with acrylics is they tend to dry pretty fast, so you don't have a whole lot of time to work with them. So again. So putting down this color and then I'm going to come back in with some more of the darker tone in some areas. And actually I wanted to bring that the color up here too um, to where these figures are. This area.
And so we've tried to figure out how you're going to paint a figure up here. It's really just a color blob. Um, so it's, it's not as difficult as you might think. It's really just about seeing the color shapes that are there. Eventually, every space in here will be filled with mm -hmm. color. Um, and what I want to do is, though, make sure that I'm laying down the color in a sense of shape, okay, not just sort of blobbing it on. Even if it is a shape that's broken shape, there there should be some um, purpose to why I'm putting the color there and, and what kind of form that I want it to have in the end. Okay, so. And if you want a color to have, you know, a little bit more opaqueness, you add a little bit of white to it. So I want the, some of these areas down here to be able to put brush strokes down and have them seem a little more opaque. See how that works? So it starts to lay over the other color, cover it up, and become stronger shapes. So I'm going to come back in again with some of the brown. Probably should have had this thing taped down. And also, I created a sense of directional movement with a lot of these lines, so in the end, it'll feel like the, it's kind of like, uh, this, this area will look a little bit like a uh, Van Gogh with the, because the brushwork um, is going to have to echo the same kind of directional movement that you'd see in a Van Gogh, because literally, you're at, the brush strokes themselves are actually creating direction. I've just painted my hand. Not good. I use the paint kind of thin too. Um, one, it, it dries really fast, but also allows me to work you know, and kind of really catch the brush strokes, shapes. Talo? All I can hear is you talking. Okay, thank you. Okay, so again, there's still a lot of gaps and areas up here that's going to be filled in with uh, some lighter tones. Let's see how that's, that actually looks better on screen. <laughs> it fuzzes it out a little bit on screen, so. Um, Alright. Some of these. Areas I'm laying down some darker tone that I eventually want lighter colors to come back over, and also there'll be some other grays that'll come back into it. 
to get further away from your work to actually see see it so sometimes it helps to take a picture of it it also I'm finding that it helps to for me to actually look at it on screen and see what it looks like compared to what it just actually looking at the painting it's, it's for some reason it's easier to see what's going on so that's kind of cool okay so all right so that's all I'm going to do with the brown right now and the yellow I'll come back in with the Bit of the grayer tones. Okay, so I'm going to work on some of that area. So that, that area is going to be again, that's going to be this gray down purple with a little more yellow. Maybe not that much yellow. Some more yellow and then a lot of white. So, so you may not realize how gray it is until you actually put white in with it, and you see that it's eh, it's too gray. Um, it's more yellow. But that's what happens when you mix two complements together. Is the the closer it is to them being balanced perfectly, you actually get a gray. Okay, and almost any colors you mix together. Uh, the center of the color wheel would actually be gray, okay, because it's the perfect balance between the two colors. So I'm trying to create some of the colors that are that I'm seeing in there. Um, so I'm going to need one that's a little darker, but I still need to keep adding yellow to it because I want it to be gray, not purple. But yeah, again, it'll have a purple tendency, so it'll seem purple. But when you actually see it next to purple, uh, it doesn't. It appears to be a gray so I'm trying, yeah that's pretty close and and you can exaggerate some of these areas so you can actually give them a little more color so it'll have a more pop so in the end um, you may want some of these areas to even though it's supposed to be grayed down but it to be kind of a colored gray okay but like I say if you're working with natural color everything is a color so I'm going to start laying in some of these areas that's kind of nice um, and this is going to darken down even more makes a little wet and when you're trying to load your brush I don't know if you can see that yeah, yeah you can see it you want to flatten your brush into the paint okay that way you maintain the shape of the brush so I'm bring some of this up in here And again, what this is going to start doing is filling in some of these white gaps. And a lot of times, you would I would have come in and did a um, a wash over the whole painting first to kind of just lay down a tone, and then everything can kind of work against it. But this is more or less the way students are going to be working on this project. So I want to kind of I want to do it more or less the way you guys are probably going to approach it. Okay, so so again, see some of this purple. And it's not about getting every stroke exactly as it is in the picture. It's more about getting the color feel and getting the sense of the light and where the forms are. So, so again, I'm not trying to match every shape that I see. But I am starting to try and fill in this, some of these color areas. Um, and so once I get some of that down there, I want to actually come back in with an even lighter color and then break it up even more. So come back in with this. And this, I'll have to go back in again too and lighten that even more in some areas. But see, that's the same color, just a little bit lighter. So, is it, you know, as complicated as some of these spaces appear, they're not. If you start breaking it down into having a color harmony like this, using primarily yellow and purple, it's pretty easy to figure out a lot of this stuff. Okay, 
think some of that will actually be pretty light. So it's just about layering down, you know, getting down to the final strokes that will be, you know, kind of finish some of these spaces off. This will actually solidify some of these areas and then I'll have to kind of break them up again. I come back with some lighter tones in the final colors. A lot of these, the brush strokes are just like, you know, uh, press the brush down to kind of change, you know, how thick the shape is. Um, so I can go thick to thin, kind of create some variation in the shapes just with the brush. Instead of drawing these shapes out, I'm actually just painting shapes. Uh, like a lot of these, these forms will actually be constructed really out of brush strokes. If you're working with oil paints, don't put your brush in your mouth. These are just acrylic, so <laughs> it's not as problematic. I think that may have been what, what killed uh, Van Gogh. Because he was, if he was putting his brush in his mouth, he could have got lead poisoning. Make him crazy. switching back and forth between the light and dark color. And the other thing is I'll probably come back later even come back in with more darks back into the dark areas. Um, 
some of it gets too light. So it's this is again when I talk about layering, it's about building to you know the final what image that you want to have presented and making sure all the space kind of comes alive in the end. Getting there. Okay. All right, so I go with an even darker color. No, lighter color. I'm going to do some more of these lighter tones with by adding white. Actually, I'm going to go with yellow and white. Okay, so there's two different colors I see happening, like it back up in here. This was a, almost a super light gray of that, and then this is a really light color which is this, um, over the top of this gold. So, so do, I really, I need to get into this area here too, probably pretty soon in the blues. But for now, I'm gonna have two brushes and I'm gonna add some white. So I'm gonna take this color and I'm gonna add a lot of white to it. Well, maybe not that much white, I want that. Okay. So I want to take the color and make it really, really light. One sec. Yeah, because that's pretty close to white, so I almost had it right to start with. And then the same thing with this other color. I'm going to add probably a little more white to that. Oh, I don't know where that blue came from. Oh boy. Was on my paper towel. Yikes. That's why you need lots of paper towels so you don't do that. Okay, anyways, it's not life or death. This is a lighter tone, it'll mix in. Yep, and I'll just put a little more yellow into it and white. need be I can even lighten it some more okay so I'm gonna work a little bit with these two colors this lighter color and I see shape happening up here These, a lot of these lighter areas are going to be, you know, a lot of brush work with the lighter tone in the end because, you know, most of them are pretty, pretty light areas. And it's a lot easier to make the brush strokes with this kind of paint show up better when you're doing opaque colors. So, let me see. Yeah. Okay, so that's starting to look pretty good up there. So, so again, a lot of this stuff, you know, it looks a little mucky at first, and then you come back in and you tighten it up with your final colors. Like this, I'm gonna actually put a little bit of this color really thick.
here. As, as the final layers go on, it, it starts to become more and more solid. gray up against here. Even like these areas look kind of undefined, almost like white areas will eventually be a variation of color. They'll be either a violet or a yellow. Most of this will be kind of like a blue violet going into kind of like a blue gray that's super light, but you know, it won't be white. It'll actually be part of the color scheme. even a little bit more white. For some of these.
Okay, so let me see. Oh boy. All right, so that's about it for this class period. I'm going to end the recording now, and hopefully, stop.